What's up, all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Your Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. It's Friday, so let's end this week with an overview. This time around, I'm going to be talking about the Sleeper Omnibus. This is the 2022 edition from DC Comics. So, join me. And welcome back, everybody. So, what we're looking at here is the Sleeper Omnibus, the 2022 edition edition it is the latest reprint of this book so this book's only had two printings as a matter of fact i'll be comparing it to my original printing here in a little bit now this is one of my most favorite stories that has been collected in omnibus format little bit of a hidden gem and a little bit of an unknown story by ed brubaker and sean phillips or at least it was a few years ago i think a lot of people now know about it and it's on most people's radar but if you're familiar with the world of ed brubaker and sean phillips whether through criminal or kill or be killed or pulp any of those books that they've worked on then this is definitely one you want to check out and not miss out on all right let's go ahead and start the overview wait of course i did that earlier what the hell am i talking about okay uh, one thing i noticed right off the bat is the vertigo logo of course is gone being replaced by the DC Black Label line. So not quite in the DC universe, not quite out of the DC universe. Who knows where Black Label books take place? Some of them are in continuity and others are not. Everything else seems the same, with the exception of the color of the paper stock, both inside of the book and on the dust jacket. Seems like the original printing... Uh, it's a little bit yellowish, and it's, it might be a little hard to tell on camera, whereas this is just white. This feels like it's been sitting in a home where somebody smokes, even though I've owned it since day one, and that wasn't the case, unless my wife wants to tell me something, or, or my dog. But it, that's what it looks like. Not, not a lot of yellowish, just a little bit. You get a little bit of that in this original printing, as opposed to this new printing. Uh, the font is a little bit different here. A perfectly paranoid, super-powered espionage tell. Entertainment Weekly, giving it praise. As well as Publishers Weekly. Smart, cool, and cruelly funny. That's a good way of putting it. Up there, you have the character of Holden. All alone, because that's what this book makes you feel like. Remember us <laughs> selling or giving my friend the pitch of this book. That only plays video games. And I said, do you remember in the original Metal Gear when you were just left in the, um, out there in the middle of nowhere and you were alone and just had radio contact? I'm not talking about Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation. I'm talking Metal Gear on the Super Nintendo, or no, Nintendo. Nintendo Entertainment uh, System. And he was like, yeah, buy this. And he ended up loving it. That was my pitch because I knew he was into video games and... He didn't really read a lot of comics, but he ended up loving it. All right, back to this, the Sleeper Omnibus, Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips, Vertigo again, and DC. No, I don't know if they put DC Black Label. I know they do on, like, some of the absolutes, but I don't know if they do it on everything these days. So I figured they would have put a DC Black Label down there. They didn't on Animal Man either. And the back of the book showcasing this beautiful character of Miss Misery, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, here are some blurbs and praises for this, including from The Onion, the ISBN down there, and ISBN underneath it is the price. Original printing is $75, this new printing is $100. Um, underneath the dust jacket, both of these are identical, which really surprises me, but I've said the same thing about other... DC reprints that have this. So it's this black, there we go. You can see that it's embossed, the sleeper omnibus right there. And here's the spine. And then the back of the book, there's nothing. So it's not leather, it's not even faux leather. It's just like, feels like cloth. Man, this one is all dusty. I haven't seen a lot of love. Uh, but the other, like I mentioned, let's, let's give it a closer look. The other big difference is you got the New printing at the bottom and the original printing up at the top. You can see it looks like the pages are a little bit yellowed. And yeah, that's not because kept it out in the sunlight or smoke around it. That's just the way it originally came. 
All right, we're gonna open this up and then we'll do a little comparison to this version. Talk about the stories, the setup, what's collected in here. Now I am gonna talk just a little bit about minor spoilers about the Point Blank miniseries that sets up the events of Sleeper. So if you don't wanna know anything and you're already buying this because hey, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, hell yeah, you're in. Uh, yeah, then put me on mute, watch the video, hit that like button. Oh, and one more thing. The book does have mature content before I even open it up. I'm talking language, violence, sex. It's Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I think most of you all probably know what to expect. Again, just minor spoilers for Point Blank and a little bit, a little bit of Sleeper. All right, let's do this thing. All right, let's crack this book open. So you have some black end paper there. Sleeper Omnibus. A little more image is in here from Sean Phillips. And here are all the credits to the creators here. Ed Brubaker writing the entirety of the book. Sean Phillips, Colin Wilson, Jim Lee, additional art. Then you have the colorist, Janet Gell, Carrie Strachan, Tony Avina, Alex Sinclair. You have the letterers here, like Ken Lopez and Richard Starkings. Sean Phillips, of course, doing the original covers for the series, with the exception of Point Blank, which I believe that was Simon uh, Beasley. And then Sleeper created by Brubaker and Phillips. So this is one, like I said, I'm so glad that they decided to reprint because I feel like so many people missed out on it when everyone was talking about the book. Now, I love the fact that they included Point Blank. That Point Blank wasn't included in the trade paperbacks, which is the way that I originally read this. Uh, it was included for the first time here in the omnibus format. Now, you, you, I think it's so important to read Point Blank. There are other people that are like, nah, you can just jump right in because it kind of spoils something for you. Yes, it spoils the fact that Holden is an agent. Yeah, I think you probably would have known that based on the premise of the first issue. But I like the way that it's done through here. All right. The other big thing uh, is that you are going to see some Wildstorm universe characters show up, mainly the character of Grifter and John Lynch in this miniseries. Other characters like Apollo and Midnighter show up, but it's basically those two characters. And we start with the character of Cole Cash. What a cool name. Cole Cash, that's Grifter from Wildcats. And we will get to the character of Holden here in a little bit. So we meet Grifter in these very uh, pages right here. This all drawn, by the way, by Colin Wilson. So Sean Phillips doesn't start until actually the Sleeper ongoing series. Or I guess 12-issue Maxi series and the follow-up to that. Oh, that's the other thing. I forgot. <laughs> what does this collect? Because it doesn't really tell you in the book right here what it collects. It just says collecting the complete saga which doesn't really help anybody, but this does collect Point Blank, the five-issue series, season one of Sleeper, which is 12 issues, season two of Sleeper, which is another 12 issues, so you could say S Sleeper 1 through 24, and then the Coup de Gras, which is a one-shot that you don't really need to read, but they do include it in here for completest sake. All right, back to this. So Cole Cash is meeting up with John Lynch. These are two characters from the world of Wildstorm, so Wildcats and uh, Team 7. And they have quite a history together. Uh, they don't really trust each other, but they've been on a lot of missions and they respect each other for whatever role they play. Now, in the first issue, Cole Grifter, I'm just going to call him Cole from now on, because he doesn't really wear the mask throughout this, finds out that somebody has shot his friend John Lynch and put him in a coma like he's barely alive so the rest of the series is finding out who tried to kill his friend and he goes through all these different people that you if you read Wildcats you're gonna love this but like I said there's so obscure characters in here you don't even get Zealot you get like Zealot's sister what was her name Savant she shows up through here because they do have a past this one, like I said, does feature characters like the Midnighter and Apollo, but they don't really play that big of a role. Now, the most important appearance that does happen through the first uh, issue, actually, yeah, it's in the very first issue, is the character of Holden Carver. And Holden Carver is going to play the big role in Sleeper. So, in here, Holden is working for Tao, 
and Tao has a criminal organization that John Lynch is against. And here you find out that Holden has been put into that secret organization. He's gone undercover for John Lynch because he owes John Lynch some stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a bit when we get to Sleeper. Now, as you're reading Point Blank, you're really not supposed to know who Holden is. That's why some people are like, skip this, go right to Sleeper. But I feel like it's important because it introduces the character of Holden. So here Holden kidnaps Cole uh, along with somebody else that works for Tao. And they're out to kill him. That's how the whole series starts. But as you find out, this is when Holden reveals everything to Cole. He tells Cole, hey, I'm undercover. John Lynch is my contact. He's the only one that knows about me. And now you know about me. So he's like, I need help getting out. And Cole's like, okay, uh, how can we make this look good? Since you kidnapped me and you got to go back undercover. So he tells... Cole to shoot him in the leg, and that's what he does. Now, towards the end of this, Holden appears to Cole again and saying, Hey, man, remember when I said that I needed help getting out because you and John Lynch are the only people that know, and now I found out he's in a coma? I need your help. Well, Cole doesn't remember. I'm not going to reveal why he doesn't remember who Holden is, but that puts Holden in a predicament. And that's where we get Sleeper. That's what the ongoing series is. So it's this guy that's stuck in between being undercover and then working for Tao and his criminal organization. Now here he makes friends with people. Uh, he has a love interest that really can't show love. And let's get to talking about uh, Holden a little bit more. Now Holden is an interesting character because he, he has a past. He has like superhero powers. Uh, that you find out through reading the first series of Sleeper. You find out that he's in the military. His dad, James, served with John, and he wanted to follow in his dad's footsteps. So John Lynch kind of took him under his wing because he saw potential in him. Now, during one mission, something goes horribly wrong, and this thing that he touches, this artifact that he touches, that came from the bleed, as you find out, and the more you read this, you'll find out what the bleed is, um, activates powers in him. Like, it attaches itself to Holden's nervous system. Now, this artifact does give him this power, as I mentioned, to absorb pain and then distribute that pain to whomever he wants. So, that's a really cool power. As a matter of fact, I think he goes by, like, Conduit or something like that, even though he thinks it's a ridiculous name. So, that's his power. But as you find out, the lady that he's interested in, Miss Misery... She herself also has a power, and it's a horrible thing because he feels a connection to her because he feels so lost, right? He lost his connection to John Lynch. He's in a coma. How is he going to get out of this if nobody knows? So if you've seen things like The Departed, uh, it's sort of like that, but with a lot more twists and turns than you can expect. And of course, a little bit of uh, superhero stuff in here, because keep in mind, again, this takes place in the Wildstorm universe. And you are reminded that there are superheroes out there from time to time. Now, let's go back to Miss Misery, because I wanted to talk about her powers, which makes her a really interesting character. Um, now, he starts, you know, a relationship with her. It's a sexual relationship at first, but then he starts to develop feelings, because that's what happens. And, of course, he's also alone, so he feels like he has no one to turn to. Now, he doesn't tell anyone his secret, because he knows he can't trust anybody, including her. Now, when he starts developing feelings for her, she can't really return his love because her powers are really unique. She thrives on evil and it's it physically like strengthens her. So the more evil things she does, the stronger she gets. So anything that is considered wrong can make her more powerful while doing the right thing can make her sick and make her weak. And I mean sick, like she develops a disease. So it's a really weird relationship that they have. I mean, she's not the only character that he connects with here. And I think the least I say about the other connections he makes, including his relationship with Tao, the better off you'll be. And I think, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about this. Now, whether John Lynch ever wakes up from his coma and gets Holden out of this mess... You can find out for yourself whether Cole Grifter ever comes back and helps him and remembers 
who he is, or whether Holden actually wants to get out of this, or if he's just deeply in love with Miss Misery, that is up to you to find out, because I think that's the pitch, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm gonna leave it. I will say one more thing, the ending to this, I was so happy with, not, I'm not gonna say it was a happy or a sad ending, but it made sense for the book, and yeah, that's all I will say. Now, this book has 736 pages. We're going to be looking at the extras. So, like I said, there is a season one and there is a season two, but between the omnibus, you can't really tell because the chapters are done like this. It says, like, chapter 10. And then you have chapter 16. So it doesn't split the two seasons up at all. Now, before we get to the extras, we have the coup de tat sleeper here, which is a crossover. The coup de tat was a big crossover with all of the Wildstorm universe. So you had Stormwatch, the Authority, Wildcats, and Holden is involved too. Like I said, not really necessary. Always was surprised that they kept it at the back of the book instead of in between season one and two. I'm not sure why. I think it would have read better between seasons one and two. But it is in here, and this is drawn by Jim Lee. And then we get to the extras right here. So you do have some uh, sketches right here by Sean Phillips, some cover ideas, some cover inks. And it's not just Sean Phillips. You also get some stuff in here from Colin. Let me see if I can find some. Here's the thumbnail sketches for the issues. There we go. This is the Colin Wins. This is the Colin Wilson sketches right here, including ideas for the covers. And there's John Lynch. Now, again, this has 736 pages, same page count that the original one had. It is sewn binding, and there's that I right there. Now, one thing you're probably going to be seeing right now is why is it that Point Blank has full, uh, full pages like this, whereas... Sleeper has this big white border around it because I think that's a choice made by Sean Phillips and Ed Brubaker. And it's no stranger to their story because we also see it in the pages of Criminal, for example, right here. So some people feel cheated out of art, that this should be expanded, that this should go all the way to the edges. I think it's just a conscious decision by both of the creators to have it look like this. I don't know if it's like a letterbox. And to kind of give you an idea why, you know, people are upset, I'm going to compare it to a traditional size trade paperback. So this is the dimensions of a single issue. You see how the art just goes all the way to the edges, giving you the same dimensions of something like this. If this is an omnibus and the luxe size, then why isn't the art oversized? Again, I think it was a decision by the team, the creative team, to make it look like this. And... It was the way the trade paperbacks were collected, like this big white border around it. I remember that. So the heart even looks smaller there. All right, we're going to compare it to the original printing. Okay, original printing up at the top, new printing here at the bottom. I'm going to be looking at the way these open up. And the paper quality, this one opens up pretty damn good because I've read it quite a number of times. As a matter of fact, I lent it to a couple of my friends, and I don't really do that with Omnis. Um, it's the way that book lays over. Of course, you have this end paper here that lays a lot, and that's why it wants to shut on you. And here we go. Let's look at this, because I mainly wanted to focus on the colors. Both of these, by the way, are printed in Canada, but at different printers. And the colors look identical. I don't really see a difference with maybe, maybe the colors down here in the new printing are just a little bit darker. And remember what I said about the whites? little yellowish here but you can probably not even tell on camera but i just wanted to showcase a couple of different pages here point blank and yeah the colors look yeah they look identical there's grifter's mask and colors again just looking a little darker as far as the paper quality uh paper stock honestly seems just a little bit thinner than the original paper stock they used. But again, they come from different printers. Just looking at the way the books lay over towards the middle here. Again, this one has only been stretched once, while that one, 
has had plenty of love on it. Please don't take that out of context. Uh, really digging a hole there. And as we're getting closer towards the back of the book, this is the way that both of them are laying over. Right now, honestly, the only difference I see is just the white looking a little yellowish there. That's it. This almost looks identical. Really, they, you could have told me that this came from the same batch, honestly. And then towards the back of the book. But that's it. I'm so glad this is back to print. And I'm so glad so many of you get to read it for the first time. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you have previously read this and this is your first time hearing about an omnibus, if you own the omnibus, uh, if you read it, what you think about the story, if you've read it in trade paperback or in single issues, and you're not quite sure if you're going to upgrade or not, if you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and check out our Patreon where we have different tiers. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.